Hello and welcome back to the Painted Mini. Today we're going to begin our core space campaign. Okay, so last time we did a video on the rules for core space using the introductory scenario. So if you didn't catch it and you want to learn the game, go ahead and click on the link above. Go watch that episode and then come back. This is the beginning of a campaign. So not only are we going to have all of those basic rules in play, uh, we're also going to be adding some more advanced rules. We're going to be using skills this time. Uh, and this is ongoing campaign play. So if a character dies, they're dead. Uh, if we leave someone behind, there might be a way to go in and rescue them. Or we might just be looking to hire some new crew members. Um, so the stakes are higher. So jump in, join in, and uh, let's get going. All right, I'm going to go ahead and read off our intro piece for the Firstborn campaign. There's nothing more suspicious than a wide open door, even more so when the galactic core stand to the side beckoning you in. You've heard that there's a fortune to be made by any traders bold enough to step through that door and into Firstborn space. You know better than to trust that sort of talk, but in these lean times you can't afford to be choosy. Knowing you might not live to regret it, you steer your ship through the Lane Grange Gate. The crew of the Edelon approached one of the thousands of asteroids in the Firstborn system. This looks quiet enough, said Cassie Peltier, the captain. She liked to err on the side of caution. Only fools rush in, a painful lesson taught to her early in her career. Well, let those other mugs strip mine the Dyson Sphere for resources, said Wade, one of Cassie's teammates. By the time they realize they flooded the market, we'll be clutching the real gold in our sweaty little hands. Wade was from Earth, a notorious backwater planet in the Sol system. The final member of the crew, Balcor, was so huge he had to stoop everywhere in the ship. He was the engineer and would rather be somewhere a little less dangerous, although you wouldn't know to see him in close combat. Bring us in nice and quiet, Balcor, said Cassie. Hopefully we won't encounter any of the aliens. The crew were in good humor, already imagining spinning their ill-gotten gains, but you're not so sure. You didn't like the way the Galactic Corps stood back and watched as you entered Firstborn space, grinning like sharks as the little fish swam by. Very little was known about the Firstborn other than that they seemed ancient and powerful and not keen on intruders, but they were also sitting on valuable technology and minerals, all there for the swiping. However, the Firstborn are coming out of a long slumber and aren't yet organized. Hopefully you can go in quietly and avoid trouble. You carefully pilot your ship to the quietest looking asteroid you can find. There are no signs of life, and with luck, it'll stay that way. Spoiler alert, it doesn't. All right, your primary objective is alien riches. It's early days in the latest adventure, and you haven't yet found a higher purpose, although you're sure one will find you soon enough. In the meantime, stick to what you know and salvage whatever unearthly valuables you can from this temple before the time comes to leave. Secondary objective, bragging rights. Firstborn aren't the only threats inside these asteroids, as you are learning very quickly. The enormous worms living inside the rock remind you of horror stories of old, and taking one down would be a story to tell for many years to come. The first trader to defeat a rock worm in this mission gains an additional career point after the game. All right, I believe our setup is good, ready to go. All right, let's go ahead and get started here. All right, we're gonna begin by adding a peg to the hostility tracker. So we added our peg and now we're going to draw a card. Here we go. Card says, just when you thought. We're in the patrol phase. So mark the nearest entrance or door to a trader with a reminder counter. It has become overgrown with vines. Characters must interact with the wall panel to clear the vines before it can be used. So I think that'll just eat up an action, basically. I guess what we're looking at is this one right here. There's a door. This is just a open entrance, I believe. Or remind us that we cannot enter until we do a thing. Next, after the hostility phase, uh, we go to the trader phase. So it's our turn, then firstborn, then NPCs, then assessment. All right, so now it's the trader's phase. I'm gonna go ahead and put this card in the discard pile. And we can go in any order. Okay, so what I'm gonna do 
is. I kind of want to go in here and get this. I could send Wade. He can move a lot. Let's do that. So Wade goes one, two, three, four, five, one. Let's start. Two, three. Okay, next uh, I'm going to have Valcor go up, maybe interact. One, two, three. Eh, I'll stay there. And then his other action, he'll interact and he'll remove the vines. It brings us to Cassie. Okay, so in that case, she's going to go one, two, three, four, first action, second action, one, two, three. Kind of spreading out. All right, so they've all gone. We are going to go to phase. So what happens is we take a look at our patrol level or our hostility level and we are currently in patrol. Okay. Uh, we have one peg. It does bring a drone but we do roll to see if we need a firstborn. We do get a firstborn. Okay. So the way this works, the drone is going to show up first at spot number one, which is right here. All right. He is going to, let me get this guy right here. Uh, he would go ahead and do a scan. You can see he's clearly not going to see any of us. We're all protected. Um, and then he would bounce over to the second spot. which is next in sequence. So from one, he goes to two and does the same thing. He doesn't see anything. Okay, a couple of things. Uh, first off, in my setup, I was supposed to have rolled this die to two, and that would tell me where my initial drone would be. Um, so he would have been there. And then this one came in, remember, at one. Uh, he would have scanned. Uh, so let's go ahead and do this one. He would have moved from here to three, and then he would have gone from one to two. So everything's good there. No firstborn comes on during the patrol phase. Uh, when you see that green dice symbol, which is here, uh, and you roll to see if it appears, that's just the drone showing up. So one drone was already there from the beginning of the game, from the setup, and then we acquired a second drone. So they scan. They move to the next number, they scan. Uh, they both did that, so we have one here, one there. And that is all for the firstborn phase. Okay, so uh, next, I believe is our assessment phase. And for this mission, all we do is bring back and reset. So we are going to take our hostility tracker, peg, and put it in. We are going to draw a card. Card says erratic release, exhaust burst. If there was a Dyson reactor on the board and it has been destroyed, discard this card, draw another. Otherwise, choose an inactive exhaust on the board at random and activate it. Okay. So we have one, two exhausts. Uh, so this will be one, two, three. This will be four, five, six. Uh, that is a four, so this one gets activated. When this exhaust activates, anything within two is going to take damage. Luckily, nothing takes damage. Okay, three reminder counters on the exhaust. Remove one in each assessment phase. When there are none remaining, the exhaust becomes inactive again. Okay, so that's easy enough. I like to put my reminder counters on the hostility tracker. I will always see them, I won't forget them. Found one more blue. Here we go. 
Okay, so I'm just going to put these here. That uh, says to take them off during the assessment phase, so we'll just put them on this track instead. Okay, that was that. Let's go ahead and do our trader phase. Uh, starting with, we'll do uh, Wade first. He's going to go ahead and search. So his first action is to search. And what does he find? He finds ooh, a green potion, which gives him three actions. An echo orb. No, tell me what that thing does. To look that one up. Ooh, and nice. He gets a four damage boomerang. That is powerful. It's the phase loop. Okay, very good. Uh, he's going to. Let's see. We go over to his spot. He cannot carry all of this stuff. So I think what he's going to do, boomerang, he can throw. As long as he's not engaged. I think he's going to drop the pistol. Not even sure what this orb is, but he knows it's something good. No, oh man, that doesn't quite fit, does it? Okay, so... That gives him three extra actions. All right, that's what he's doing. He discards. He's going to get three extra actions this turn. He's only used one so far. Yes! He's going to go. He can get into this room and be pretty soon. Maybe not. There's <laughs> a lot of doorways. Um, okay, next action. He's going to go ahead and move one, two... Three, four, five. First free action. One, two, three, four, five. One, um, second one. One, two, three, four, five. Third one, he's going to search. It's going to be right out in the open. He's risking it for the brisket. He's just going to find a bunch of stuff and leave it so we know what it is, I guess. Okay, we have some funky things here. We have some kind of Dyson fuel. We have a pier uh, triangle thrown weapon. It must be a ooh, Dyson orb. Dyson draw plus. Okay, I think that's going to be a area attack weapon of some sort the item extracts and stores firstborn energy the first hit of each firstborn ranged attack made against the holder of this item is negated energy counter is placed on top of all items held with this icon oh it explodes so it stores energy and then you can throw it like a bomb the item has no effect if a character is wearing or benefiting from shield armor so this one allows you to suck up energy and then shoot it back. Okay. So Wade, you, sir, are going to drop this thing. You are going to take this thing. Okay. Next, we're going to go ahead and do, uh, that was Wade, this is Cassie, she's going to search. What does she find? It's falling out, falling out. Okay, she does find a little control module. It will be used. A control stone, whatever that is. So she has a phaser engram. No idea what that is. Four, four, three. All right, this is a ranged weapon. That's pretty cool. She's going to keep that. Plus two health. That's definitely cool. Or does she go with this thing? What is this thing? 
This item allows the user to make a move action that can pass through all walls and other terrain, but cannot end on top of them. Um, I'm going to drop the stem pack because the new potion she has gives her the exact same advantage and it's smaller and that will allow her to carry all that other stuff. So this one she's going to just drop back in. Okay, that was her first action. Uh, her second action, she's in a good spot. Wade is not. God, girl. But that guy is in there. Okay, we're kind of just following these. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Balcor, might as well come on, man. What's he got? This normal movement. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I don't think he would instant die if the thing got him, but. And he's going to go one more spot. Uh, we just finished the traitor phase and now it is the firstborn phase so we look over here uh, we do not get a new drone this turn uh, but our drones are going to activate so the first one activates he doesn't see anything number three he's going to search he doesn't see anything okay number four is right here he doesn't see anything he searches and then he shows up at four and he searches. Ooh. He could go through here, through here. I think he sees Balcor. <laughs> oh, this is bad. So he scans. Oh, no, no, no. I think it's just this ruler. I'm going to double check that to make sure. But I think it might have a range to it. That would save our butts, if that's the case. Okay, so I was right. Because the distance is longer than medium range, he does not see me. Uh, so he just moves there, scans, everything is good. This guy scans nothing, he moves to three, scans, and sees nothing. So, whew, okay. Nothing arrives, so we don't have to worry about that. That's the end of their phase. And we are back to the hostility phase. So here we go. We are going to add a peg. So this time we will get a new drone if it rolls on the green die. And let's do the event. All right, we've added a peg to the board. Um, and we read surprise assault. Uh, for patrol, it says status check. The nearest drone to a stasis pod makes two move actions toward it. If it makes base contact with it, mark it with a reminder counter. It will miss its next turn. In the following round, unless alerted, it will spin its turn, returning to the nearest patrol point. So this guy was over here. Uh, let's do this. So this guy is gonna move one, two, three, four, four and one uh it is base contact we mark it it's going to miss its next turn it's checking the status of course <laughs> and then it's going to go back over there that was a pretty nice one good for us okay doing some busy stuff all right that is the end of the hostility phase that was the event so now we go back to the trader phase okay now all right, I'm just going to lay these out now so that we can see what's inside of there. Uh, I guess I will have Wade go first. He can try to make it out to that other pod. How far out do these guys want to go? Ugh. There's no objective in this one other than to get some loot and get out. Okay, so he's going to go ahead and do it. So he gets four plus one for each movement. He's going to go one, two, three, four plus one, and 
then a one, two, three, four, plus one, getting behind the pillar. Uh, he could go one more, or he stays put, because if it goes again, he'll be seen. Okay, I think it's safer. He's going to stay there. He'll still be able to search next turn. He's also safe from the exhaust if it does decide to kick off. Well, on, let's have Balcor go. Balcor might want to pick up some stuff. Balcor is going to step here and search for his first action. He can pick up a couple of items here. That shield is nice. He doesn't really want to throw it out. He's going to keep the shield there and grab these two. I forgot what that one does. The item deflects firstborn energy. Firstborn range sex made against holder of this item are reflected back at the attacker. So that's going to be, he still has one action actually. He's going to move. So he's going to go one, two, three, four. And he already used his little extra movement. So he's going to stop there. That's it for Valcor. And Cassie, Cassie, Cassie. All right, Cassie is going to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and she can go one more, she'll go there. Okay, that is her turn, that's all of them. So once again, we go to, we get a new drone, if it arrives, it does. Okay, so we get a new drone, Drone is going to appear at spot number two, of course. Holy hell. All right, so new drone shows up. Spot number two. All right, let's do activations. Okay, activations. Uh, we're going to start with this guy here. That just reminds us that he's kind of skipping his turn. And he's just going to go back to there. All right, this guy scans his room again moves to number four and then scans the room they don't see anything this guy is going to see Balakor. yeah so he scans he sees houston we have a problem let's see what happens here Okay, the drones become alerted. That's all of the drones. I think our sneaky time is over. Okay, we instantly move the hostility tracker all the way to inspection. So, broop. Okay, and then they will all get a regular AI attack. Okay. We move the increase the chance of successful attack. Uh, no, let me check on their card. Uh, their range attack is to can be made up to a medium range and follow the normal rooms for shooting and engage characters. Okay. So it's doing a two dice range attack. That is two hits. Okay, against a man here now. The beauty is he gets to absorb. Ooh. Which of these takes precedent? We're going to do this reflection one first, I think. So it's going to reflect back at the drone. No cover. Boom. He blows up the drone. So that drone is a goner. Now the others are alerted, so they get to use the flow chart as well and take their actions. Uh, is the drone in base contact with an enemy? No. Is there a target? No. Uh, will moving increase the chance of successful attack? Move towards the nearest enemy. They know they're over here somewhere. So he's going to go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right. So they each move four. If drones are unable to reach their target without harm, instead of phasing to an entry point. Okay, so that's different. So what they would do. This guy would spin an action to phase here, and a second action to attack. And it's going to be, once again, two dice, two hits. It's deflected. 
Okay, and it again pops the drone. Blows them up. This one has to move and then it can phase. So it's gonna show up here but not be able to attack. So that's it. That's the end of their phase. And now we go and remove another reactor token. Let's reset all of these. Let's add a hostility. Let's go ahead and do our event card. Much appreciated. Patrol, feeling lucky? Choose it. Oh, sorry, we're not in patrol, we're in inspection. Second win. Mark a non-machine trader with a reminder counter. When they activate, they may use an action to restore up to two health pegs. Ooh, or use two actions to restore three health pegs. Well, that's cool, but nobody is wounded yet. I'll give it to Valcor just in case. Actually, let's put it on his character. So an action to restore two, two actions to restore three. I didn't know he had good events. We'll take it. Okay, that's the end of that. Now we go into the trader phase. And for the trader phase here, I think Cassie's gonna go first. She's gonna go one, two, three, four, and then search. She finds another command module, control stone, whatever those are. She finds something funky, I'll have to look up. It looks like some kind of phase weapon. Ooh, and she finds an artifact, and she finds what looks like some kind of key. All right, let's take a minute and see what this stuff is. Okay, the puzzle piece one is simple. That's worth money, especially if you find the other piece to it. Okay, this other one, it's a quantum lens. And what does it do? Let's look for that symbol here. The quantum lens, when used, this item allows the user to make a ranged assault action with any of their weapons at up to the range shown, uh, which is short range. That can draw line of sight through all walls and other terrain. So it basically allows you to shoot through a wall, but it's only good for one use. Mm, that's probably going to get left behind. And what is this little key thing? When using Firstborn Terrain, the character carrying this item can pass freely through closed and locked doors, as well as hidden doors. Doors that they pass through will remain closed and or locked if they already were. Ooh, so kind of just a pass key. Man, okay. Is she gonna drop her pistol to take that artifact? She could also carry that command module. She's probably going to drop her health. If she does that, she could carry these to the key. And another command module. I feel like those might be important. She moved and she searched. That's going to be the end of her turn either way. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing as before. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just lay these out beside so we know what's inside. Okay, that is the end of Cassie's turn. Wade, Wade, what are you carrying that you don't really care about? That boomerang is sweet though. It can only do short range. Like all thrown weapons can only be short range, but let me make sure. I think I'm gonna get out. Wade moves one. That gives him his line of sight. Just to double check, he's definitely short ranged. All right, Wade is going to use his boomerang. It's four dice. That is ridiculous. As long as I hit, it comes back to me. I definitely hit because it's firstborn. That doesn't even affect anything. I just did a whole bunch of damage to this guy. Boom. All right, Boomerang comes back. Wade hates to leave that pistol behind. He's going to come over here. That's his second action. And he'll stop there. He's just going to get ready to do a search if he needs to. 
Okay, Valcor, you can heal if you want. There's nothing to heal, brother. Why don't you start heading, heading back out? All right, I think I lost a little bit there. Uh, Valcor was here. Uh, I'm having him one, two, three, four. He's gonna search and he's just switching out his stem pack and he is taking his shield belt back. He will move one more and that's his turn. And let's go ahead and do the firstborn phase. So we do get a drone for sure. We roll to see where it arrives. It arrives at number six. And now we also have to check to see if we get a firstborn. This will be our first one. Yes, we do. They have been alerted. And where does he arrive? He arrives at number three. All right, so firstborn coming in at number three. Now we go and do the AI. So for the drone, he is going to phase for one action to the nearest target. And now I think he's just gonna get a shot that Wade is less in cover. And he takes, well, he would take one, but I believe it is absorbed by his weapon. So he puts a token on the weapon. Let me just make sure it's only one. The first hit of each firstborn ranged attack made against the holder of the item is negated. Okay, so, and this item actually can hold up to eight for it overload. He phased, he fired, that's the end of his turn. Uh, now we have the firstborn, so he's gonna not, I don't think he phases the same, but let me see. If drones are unable to reach their target without harm, okay, maybe they only phase if they would take harm. Yeah, I think he's just gonna move. Okay, so he gets two actions. He's gonna go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so he's on his way. All right, it's this guy right here. So that was the end. He would have moved and then the drone would have attacked. Um, that's the end of that. Now the exhaust actually kicks off. And back to the hostility tracker. Um, Boomerang did not count as firing a shot. No one's fired a shot yet. Good deal. Except for the drone. Okay, let's do the event card. The event says... Sudden power. If there are any dice and reactors on the board, they activate immediately, following the normal rules. Any inactive exhausts on the board become active. After resolving their effects, if any, mark all exhausts inactive and remove any counters they may have. Any dice and equipment token with the icon to the right in play gains one energy counter. Okay, so, so the dice and reactor activates. Okay, that sucker is on. Um, oh, exhaust vents kick on. No, ooh, I think I'm about to take some damage. Any inactive exhaust on the board become active. Yeah, this is going to be bad. And then let me read. Let's see if we burn to a crisp. Okay, for Dyson Reactor, it says, the reactor activates when Acelia reaches wake protocols, unless you're otherwise. While active, add an energy counter in each assessment phase. Traders may interact with the reactor to move any number of energy counters onto a Dyson item. While reactor has energy counters, it can be assaulted. It has a physical armor of three, and any damage will destroy it. Ooh. When destroyed characters with an X square suffer an attack with X dice ignoring cover, where X is the number of counters on the reactor. Okay, so let's get some tokens ready here. 
things are just going to start ticking on there as it heats up. And let's look at the inner, uh, the exhaust here. Exhaust is activated by event cards while active. Add flame marker. Line of sight cannot be drawn through exhaust. Range equals two squares. Characters suffer an attack. Two dice within two squares. Three if adjacent. Adjacent. I am within two. Okay. And this thing doesn't say to deactivate. Holy hell. Okay. So Wade is going to take two dice of damage here. So one damage. He has no armor. Um, so his health drops by one. And I believe that's going to be it for the event. All right. So now it is the trader's turn. We are going to take our trader actions. Starting with Wade, he could do a search action. But he needs to move first. And she is in the way. So I'm going to actually have Cassie move first. She's going to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. She's in the doorway. Okay, so she's right in the doorway, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, how's that? Not in, not out. There you go. And oh, she can do her one more, I guess. So she'll do one more. Get her to there. She's bugging out. Wade is going to step over here. Okay, his uh, action is he's going to use his stem. It's going to give him two health back. Yes! He's going to move, and he's going to search. And what he's going to do is he's going to retrieve this pistol. And that's going to be it for his turn. He's out of the heat. He is going to get shot by this buggy. But that's okay. Wade went. Balcor. Okay, let's go, and I think we're on Balcor here. He was the last one to go, and I think at this point, we have all of our slots pretty much full. We're carrying mostly alien artifacts. I think it's time to go. So, Balcor is going to move. He goes one, two, three, four. Uh, one, two, three, four. And he's going to move one more. Okay, so Balcor is taking his turn. That's the end of the trader phase. We then go to the firstborn. We are going to get a new drone. Okay, so we'll get a drone, and it comes in at one. Oh, shit. Okay. And we roll for the firstborn. We get one. First, we have this guy. He goes one, two, three, four. Okay, so he's going to make a range assault against Wade. Two dice, one hit. Wade has no armor, but he does still have that crazy weapon. So he soaks another damage. Okay, now we do the drones. And uh, this one is going to shoot at Wade. Ooh, two hits. <laughs> one is soaked. And the other comes off as a damage to Wade. And he gets another shot. He's going to do it again. One hit, and again, it's going to get soaked, that's it, and then this one now, he's going to move one, two, and shoot at Cassie. One hit, spot down her armor, 
Uh, so no damage. All right. That is it for their phase. Reactor. Oh yeah, I forgot that this would load both of theirs beginning of their turn because of the Dyson. Um, these come off. And one of these goes, we'll just put it here. Going to do the peg and event card. Here we go. All right, the event card says, the nearest liege to a trader calls for backup. Place up to two drones at the nearest patrol point to the liege. One's already there, the other one comes up. Okay, it's now our turn. No oh, way, do you get a book? I'm gonna do Cassie first. She's going in, she's going one, two, three. She's going to fire at the nearest drone. Ooh. She smokes it. Okay. She moved. She shot. She's going to step one over. Okay. That's Cassie. Wade. No, I just book it, Wade. He's gonna move. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And he can go one more. Balcor, what you doing, buddy? What you doing? I think he's just gonna chill. He's gonna search just the room. So he searches the room. The room has been searched. I think he gets to pull from the green bag. He gets a blade. That's better than your weapon, buddy. Let's do it. I'll drop that. Pick up that thing. That's cool. All right, that's it for you. Okay, these guys go. And get one. Get one new drone. He comes in at three, uh, which is up there. Okay, now let's see if we also get Nope, no leash. Okay, so he comes in at three. This guy's gonna go first though. Three, four, one, two, three, four. Ooh, can he attack through a door? I think he can, let's see. Oh, but he's gonna get damaged. Okay, instead of getting damaged, he should have already been damaged for being there. I'm gonna say he stopped back here then. He is going to spend one action to phase in right here. And then another action to shoot. And he does one damage to Wade, which is just going to be another energy. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, man. Better start using some of this. Okay. This drone is now going to move. It's gonna go one, two, three, and shoot. Oh, whiff. No hits. Move the shot. This guy over here goes one, two, three, four. Again, he's gonna phase to right here. That'll end his turn. Add a peg. We're gonna re 
ID event card. Event says, cleanse, here they come. Choose a trader, a portal appears two squares away from them with firstborn faces peering out. The trader must choose to fire into it, <laughs> okay, or ignore it I'm gonna do it, okay. Uh, wait, you just shoot, bam, bam, boom, okay. And raise hostility by one. And this gets shuffled back into the deck. Okay, it is my turn. And I'm going to go ahead and activate Wade first. And Wade is going to shoot. So three. Attacking the firstborn. Two hits. The firstborn has one shield. That's enough to kill it. Since you away. That was a shot. And he's going to move. One, two, three, four, five, plus one. Cassie. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, plus one. Balcor. What you doing, Balcor? Not a lot. Just hanging out. Oh well, he's just gonna skip his turn then. Okay, so now we're back to here. Put another reactor core over here. We add a peg. Now we are moving into the aware phase. Okay. Draw a card. There we go. Phase shard, the leech nearest to and within medium range of a trader throws a phase blade. There isn't one. Maybe nothing happens. Okay. Uh, next it's us. Let's say we just get off Valcor. He exits. Wade. One, two, three, four, five, and he exits. I come through there. All right. Cassie. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Go, All right. go, she go. exits as well. All right. Uh, we're going to go on into the next phase. Uh, which is where the campaign really comes alive. So let's see how we did. Uh, for trade, it says next, you'll get a chance to head to the trading post to buy and sell equipment and even hire new crew members ready for your next mission. Phase is covered on page 61. Okay, it says, no sooner had they heard of a wealth of precious minerals and alien tech to exploit the galaxy's traders, freeloaders, entrepreneurs, and assorted riffraff headed straight there. The fact that those goodies belonged to a dangerous species bent on genocide was a small and overlooked inconvenience. The result of this mass migration is Trading Post 5, a way station hastily established in a crater on an abandoned asteroid, the Lagrange Point. Here an enterprising captain can hire traders, mercenaries, and other useful hands and stock up on fuel, machines, equipment, and weapons in an eclectic bazaar of stores, workshops, bars, and dens of iniquity. Constructed primary from shipping containers and old atmosphere processor, the trading post can be quickly disassembled and moved to another location should the firstborn become too aware of them. The outpost attracts a colorful assortment of dubious characters and ne'er-do-wells, exactly the sort of tough shifty types you'd expect in the final outpost before untold wealth or grisly death. The sole proprietor, Derek, a retired trader and suspected pirate, will welcome you with open arms, but only if you've got something he wants. Okay, we've managed to make it back to the ship and this is really where I think the fun is gonna begin as far as the campaign goes. Okay, we're at the top of page 54 and it says post-game sequence. Unlike one-off missions, after a campaign game, there are some additional steps to work out the impact of the game on your crew. Post-game sequence has four phases. First phase is extraction. In this phase, players must decide what to do about any comrades left behind. They may get kidnapped, mount a daring rescue, or you can just leave them for dead. We don't have to worry about that. We got all three off. 
Uh, second would be the advancement, and this phase is where your characters will advance, learning new skills and becoming more powerful. Phase is covered on page 60. So let's flip over to 60 now and see what happens. Advancement phase. It says, finding new equipment isn't the only way to improve your trader's abilities on the table. As they survive missions and gain experience, they will also learn new skills. As detailed on page eight, each trader's board lists their career statistic representing their current ability level. The default spaces will be filled in at the start of every standalone game or campaign, but it is in this advancement phase where the potential spaces can be filled in too. Okay, uh, earning career points. It says while filling out the first row of their career track, each time a character survives a mission and makes it back to the ship during the game, regardless of whether they completed their objective or not, they gain one career point, fill in the first empty space on their trader board. Okay, so what we do, let's take these, I'll just bring all these in the camera here and get my wet erase. Okay, so we see career is right here. I'm gonna fill in another space on for each character it looks like. Look at that token. All right. And Balcor also gets his second space. Okay. When I'm filling out the second row, the characters must survive the mission and their crew must have completed the mission's primary objective. Okay, so the first row is freebies. Second row, you have to complete the objective. Once a trader is onto the third row, they will only gain career points in special circumstances. Whew, okay, so it just gets tougher and tougher. All right, uh, additional career points can be spent. It can be allocated to the character skills on their class board. Pick a skill that you want to advance and fill in one of the spaces next to its icon. You'll be able to use this skill at a level equal to the number of marked spaces from your next game onwards. So let's see, we're each gonna get one more dot basically. And if you look, Cassie's are all totally filled out in her personal spot, but she can still upgrade here in this area. Oh, I'm gonna take a second and see what these are. So for Cassie, we go. Okay, so she already has two in weapons. She could get one more for weapons expert. You can shoot a weapon from an enemy's hand, make a range attack. This rolls two dice regardless of the weapon stats, but must be within range and line of sight. Okay, we also have her marksman would be level two. Uh, make a range attack with one extra combat die after rolling the dice. You can split the hit scored between up to two eligible targets within range of your weapon and within short range of each other. I also have counter shot. It's a reaction. Use after being attacked with a range attack. Make a range attack against the attacker. So that's weapons, marksman, and counter shot. Let's go on to see what else she has. She has combat expert. She's currently at level one. She would get a passive ability. You may make a close assault action as an effortless action. She really does not have a close assault stat. Uh, let's see, the eyeball is reflexes. She has level one already. She would be level two reaction. After being targeted with a close assault, ignore all hits scored, then make an immediate close assault action. She also has walk it off. She's level one. This would give her level two. Reaction, after being targeted with an attack, reduce damage sustained by two. She also has stubborn. It would allow her to make a move action. Um, out of all of these, man, I think I'm gonna give her a marksmanship. Yeah, shoot a weapon from an enemy's hand. So she's actually level three, because she has two here, one there. Uh, I'm just gonna mark all three of these, just so I don't get confused, because it is cumulative. So she's maxed out in that stat. Okay, going over to Wade. Wade gets one as well, and He's got that reflex shot. He's got walk it off. This fox, nobody else has it. I believe this has to do with convincing people to join your crew or bartering for supplies. I think it has to do with the persuasion, which would be cool. Let me see what we got. Persuasion, make a persuasion action against an enemy trader with their own default, not current skill statistics counting as their persuade value. Although, if I beef this up, I can then get into persuading other NPCs. Okay, he also has light fingers. 
Use after being attacked with a close assault action in which you took no damage. Take any item from the attacker's item tray other than the one they attacked with. You could just move out. That's kind of a powerful ability. He already has one in ambush. The second one would give them the reaction. Use when an enemy ends a movement within four inches of you and you are in full or partial cover. Make a move action and then an assault action against that enemy. You may make a proximity move before or after these actions. He already has one that lets him make a ranged assault. This allows him to move and then assault. And the other one is slippery. So he could jump over things. Well, let's go with... I'm going to do that persuade just because it might pay off later if he can keep building that up. Okay, and then we have... Arendar. Uh, Balcor. He has walk it off already. He's got stubborn. Mm, what are these two fists? He's already got so much close combat madness. Onslaught. Use after scoring one or more hits on an enemy in close assault. Make another close assault action. Oh my god, yes please. Okay. That's pretty good. Okay, that concludes they're leveling up from that point. Let's see if they get any other points or anything. Okay, let's see. Uh, advancement next is trade. Hold on, let me just double check advancement here. Make sure we're done. Bending kill points. Level each row of career spaces on a trader board is a level. Filling all the spaces on a row allows the character to level up which has added benefits. Okay, so none of mine have leveled up. So now we go on, it looks like, to the trade phase. Uh, for trade, it says next, you'll get a chance to head to the trading post to buy and sell equipment and even hire new crew members ready for your next mission. Phase is covered on page 61. Okay, it says, see, in the trade phase, the traders take their salvage and any rewards, any reward for completing their mission objectives, and visit the trading posts where they can buy and sell items and hire new crew. Items are bought and sold using the game's currency, UA. The cost of buying and selling is shown on the back of the token, Asteroid Temples. Be careful when you sell them as you may never find them again. When buying an item, reduce your assets by its costs and then take it and add it to your ship's hold or a trader's item tray. So what I think we are doing here, our asset amount is going to go right here. Right now we're at zero. So we spent everything on the equipment. Okay, let's figure out what we're keeping and what we're not. There's also a VIP area. It says, although crew, Trading Post 5 has rules. You just can't go anywhere. Or invites, the most exclusive part of the post must be earned. Also covers crafting, hybrid equipment. Money isn't the only thing you can trade with. At any time during the trade phase, you can choose to barter with your fellow players. That's open trading. Uh, you can hire crew. We'll do that next. Okay, so I don't think we need to hire any crew, but Cassie has these two little pieces that are controllers for something she hasn't encountered yet. Um, she has a key. It's only worth four, but it gets her through any lock. She has this funky thing, which is kind of cool, but it's worth five. And she has this, which is only worth four. Yeah, so this gets exponentially more valuable if you collect more pieces. If I put that in the ship hold, I want to keep these two for sure for future missions. Okay, this thing, she's already used it once. Uh, what about selling those items? No, oh, it's worth six. I think I'm going to sell this one. That would give us six if I sell that. And she wants to keep these others I think but she is going to need a weapon wow the Dyson Vent weapon is worth 14 15, 16, 17 that is a lot that is an awful lot does he keep it though it's a good weapon he can choose how many shots and it soaks so it counts as a shield Pretty impressive, it never breaks. I feel like he needs to keep that for the team, probably give it to Cassie, but 
but he also has the boomerang, which is great. It's worth 12. God, these things are so cool, I don't want to sell them. I'll keep the pistol. This light, I don't know what it's really for. I'll sell it. Five. Might be a mistake. That'll bring me up to 11. Okay, uh, and then Balcor has this mine. It's worth six. Basically, it sucks up energy. Once it gets the three, it's going to blow up, though. I think he's going to sell that for six. Gives us 17. Uh, he did get a good blade, the Lee Shard. It's melee. He doesn't need that, but he could give it to one of these others. I think he is going to give it to someone else. It's a good weapon. And then he's got the Echo Orb that reflects attacks back on people, but it's going to get discarded eventually. I'm going to sell that too. So that puts me at 24. The belt, not great. It takes up a spot, but it's only worth two. I have 24, and what I need, Cassie needs a weapon. All right, so we finished up our initial first mission. We were playing it a little bit conservative. As soon as we were detected by the drones and things started coming in, we had kind of decided that we had already hit quite a bit and our inventory was pretty full. Uh, we had a lot of stuff on us. So it was worth getting off, I think. So we went ahead and extracted. Okay, so we have gone ahead and done our initial trade phase. So we went to Trader Post 5. Cassie sold off the stuff she didn't think we'd need. And it yielded us a whopping 24 UA. Now we do have to keep in mind that other than the captain, the traders need to be paid for the mission. They get paid one for completing the mission and another one for their level. So that's going to be two for Wade, two for Belcor. That's going to be four more points that we have to pay them. So we really only have 20. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, these don't cost anything. This is the plus two health stem. Uh, I am going to buy Wade this armor. Uh, it is going to reduce his speed. Remember, he had a footprint here before. That armor costs seven. Um, and here, I'm going to go ahead and pay them just to get that four out of the way and be done with that part. Paying them would bring me down to 20, and then 13 is left over after the armor. And again, this stem and this stem didn't cost anything. So we're at 13 now. So let's kind of continue on and see what happens. Uh, the next phase is, I believe, ship maintenance. So bad things are going to happen to the ship. It's just systems degrading. Then we'll get a chance to repair. And then if everything is repaired on the ship, then we'll get a chance to upgrade the ship. Um, so degradation just says, first, each player must roll the knowledge die and consult the following table to see which of the ship's systems have deteriorated with use. So we roll the die, and it is a six. Equipment malfunction. Choose one random equipment token with a cell value of up to five UA from those held by your crew and in your hold. Ooh, and discard it. That's rough, because I can't turn around and buy more stuff. <laughs> Choose one random, oh, equipment token with a cell value of up to five UA. Okay, well, this could suck. I didn't think, I guess, malfunction would still apply to alien gear. Let's just flip all of these over now. Okay, and the cell value is the one over here. So that's the Lee Shard, both of those, the phase loop. Oh man, this is gonna... Okay, let's check these and see if, I don't think they're gonna be expensive enough to qualify. Nope. So we're gonna be losing one of these three. All right, let's do it. So one and two. Three and four, five and six.
Oh, it is a one. We just lost the amazing Dyson Vent weapon. That hurts real bad. Okay. I don't, oh, this is bad. All right, it's gonna go back to Wade. Well, we're in trouble now. Okay, so she's gonna have to find a weapon, it looks like. Okay, I think uh, in this situation, since she has all the ranged abilities, she would go ahead and take the pistol. That's not good. Okay, that's what happens though. So, we just lost that amazing rifle we had. And let's go. The good news is nothing on the ship degraded. Um, so we are able to upgrade. So the way upgrades work is we have to roll to see the availability of the parts and stuff we need. It's going to tell us how much it costs based on that. Uh, the three types of upgrades we can do, we have scanners. And scanners allow you uh, to scan the searchable items in the temples look at them and then put them back before the mission even begins. Uh, I believe the level one is just a medium scan. Level two is anywhere on the map. And then level three actually lowers the hostility tracker and kind of slows down the enemies when they start coming in. Um, it's got a little bit more function to it. The next one is going to be the auto dock defense system. So, the way that works is this is your ship, and it starts somewhere on the map. Uh, it's going to give you a gun that has line of sight and range uh, that you can use uh, when you're playing the game. Level 1 is just that, I believe. Level 2 uh, extends the damage of the weapon. And then I forgot level three does something a little more crazy. We won't worry about it yet. The last upgrade you can make is to the uh, auto dock thrusters. So what this does, it actually allows you to move your ship around. So level one, I believe you can move it anywhere along the starting axis. And you can see that if you have um, the auto defense system, it changes your line of sight. Uh, so those two kind of work hand in hand. Uh, level two allows you to go across the other axis and again level three does something even better and I can't remember what it is but we'll worry about that later I think what I'm going to do for now is I want to go ahead and try to upgrade the auto defense so we can have some that way if we're being chased off we can get some shots off uh, we have to roll to see what it's going to cost you rolled a three and you found some good quality parts, but to screw the purchase, it'll cost five UA. Okay, it's five, and since it's a level one, it's gonna cost one more, so it's gonna cost six. And then I'm going to mark that on both sides of my shipboard. And then we will subtract six, which leaves us with seven UA. Okay, um, that's it for the upgrades. One upgrade per turn. Uh, and that's it. Now I'm going to go ahead and read to you what the mission is. What our next mission briefing is. So, I'm a little nervous now that we don't have a weapon for Cassie. Or a good one. Oh well, we'll, we'll make do. Okay, because it sounds like we're going pretty deep in this time. All right, mission briefing two is don't spare the rod. You found some good tech on your last mission. There's no reason to suppose there's not more just lying around in the dust, neglected and waiting to be appreciated by an attentive trading crew. You choose another asteroid at random, and your preliminary scan seems promising. However, the asteroid seems more active than the last, so you instruct your crew to go in careful. You're salvagers, not soldiers. 
They're an experienced team, so they know all about being paranoid. But you can't help clucking like a mother hen, as any good trader captain should. You point out that the stasis pods can be destroyed before the liege awaken. That's pretty ruthless coming from you, but it's a choice between the lives of your crew and unknown dangerous aliens. Your crew will always come first. So on this mission, we're going to have our primary objective uh, is we're going to receive 10 UA. Hungry for more after your previous expedition, you are on the hunt for more alien tech. Your scanners have picked up some sort of power source, the 3 UA Dyson rod on the floor near where you dock your ship. Using its power signature, you are able to detect a much stronger signal coming from deep inside the rock. A higher value 10 UA Dyson rod should be placed in the opposite corner of the board as shown on the map. This is your objective. It's hidden inside seemingly impenetrable walls, so you will need to find a way through, either by manipulating the firstborn command console or by finding a crystal shard key. Good news, we already have a crystal shard key. Secondary objective, free labor. The wounds from the first battles against the firstborn are not just physical. They've gotten into your heads and left your crew jumpy. They are particularly creeped out by the lieges, and keeping those at bay would put the crew's mind at ease. Stasis pods can be destroyed in this mission. They have a physical armor of two, and a single hit will destroy them. Once a stasis pod is destroyed, it will no longer spawn a liege, if applicable, and any tokens inside are destroyed along with it. Any trader that destroys a stasis pod will not require an upkeep payment after the game. All right, so that's basically worth, in this case, uh, two UA extra for any pod that gets destroyed, one by Wade, one by Balcor, so up to four. All right, we're going to stop it there, and next time we'll get together and we'll go through that mission. So, thanks for joining me. If you haven't liked and subscribed the channel, please do. Uh, this is going to be a lot of fun as we go through and explore this. I'm going to try my best to keep these three alive, uh, maybe pick up a few more along the way. So join me next time and take care. Hey, I just wanted to pop in real quick and say that if you enjoyed the music that I used in this episode, it's all original composition by two very talented friends of mine, Ty McMahon and Trevor Duvall. It's something that we put together for a Blade Runner RPG from Free League, and it is on Trevor Duvall's website me myself and die the quality is top notch if you haven't seen it go check it out and support his channel i'll provide the link at the end of this video take care and i'll see you soon